record history here. So um, without uh, Freddie Black, the history may be very different than what it is now. But to tell you kind of more about um, the, the career, his career and his legacy, I'm going to invite up uh, Chris Morris, who's a legendary um, uh, <laughs> uh, writer and DJ in the in the music community for a number of times. He's been uh, lead writer for Billboard. He was the um, a music editor for Hollywood Reporter, as well as up here, uh, many of his articles appear at Rolling Stone, Mojo, uh, Spin, many other um, leading music magazines and uh, publications. So, Chris, you want to come up? Legendary, that means near death. <laughs> Happy to be here this afternoon. Um, when Glenn Wallace, Johnny Mercer, and uh, Buddy Silva started uh, Capitol Records in April 1942, uh, there was one thing that they needed desperately. They needed a hit. And so on July 1st of 1942, they released uh, 678 RPM singles. And number 102 was a little ditty called Cow Cow Boogie by Freddie Slack with vocals by Miss L. May Morris. And um, it became a fairly sizable hit. But let me tell you a little bit about Freddie Slack. Uh, Freddie was not an unknown quantity when uh, he came to uh, Capitol Records. Uh, he was born in the uh, hamlet of Barocco, Wisconsin on August 7, 1910. He moved to Chicago at the age of 17 to do some studying, and that's where he caught the jazz bug big time. In 1934, he joined Ben Pollock's band where he played uh, alongside Harry James and Glenn Miller. And he was later with Jimmy Dorsey's band, uh, which also featured um, a 14-year-old lead vocalist by the name of Helen A. Morris, of whom we'll hear a bit more. Uh, he was much influenced by the playing of a uh, boogie-woogie piano player, black boogie-woogie piano player by the name of Tom Top Smith. And um, in 1940, he had a big hit with the uh, Ray Kinley Will Bradley band called Beat Me Daddy Ate to the Bar. And uh, that was followed up by another well-known book you will soon called Down the Road a Piece. Um, but in 42, uh, after he had started out his own band, uh, Freddie uh, was one of the first people to be signed Capitol Records by Johnny Mercer, Buddy Silva, and Glenn Wallace. And um, uh, they, had to, they had to get to work pretty rapidly because on August 1st, 1942, the American Federation of Musicians began a recording band. A recording band. James Petrillo, who was the president, said, uh-uh, you're not going to record. So, everybody who was signed to Capitol had to churn out a lot of music. And um, one of the tunes was a song called Cow Cow Boogie. Now, this song was written by Glenda Paul, Betty Carter, and Don Ray, who also wrote Beat Daddy Ace the Bar. Uh, it was originally intended for a movie uh, that Ella, uh, Ella Fitzgerald was going to be in, but the producers didn't like the way she sang. <laughs> so it didn't make the cut, and um, it wound up getting recorded by Freddie Black and Helen Lane Morris, uh, who actually performed it for a 1943 film called Reveille with Beverly. And if you've never seen that clip, check it out on YouTube. It's also on my Facebook page. Um, and uh, it's probably no coincidence that um, Cow Cow Boogie was the first tune that they had Freddie Black do, because it sounded quite a bit like another tune called an old cow hand. Anybody know that tune? It was recorded by Bing Crosby in 1936 and it was written by Johnny Mercer. So, not an unknown commodity. So, supposedly, Cow Cow Boogie was one of the first tunes to sell a million copies. Uh, it was an incredibly popular 78, made it to number nine in the national top 10. There were two more top 10 hits by Freddie Slack and Elmay Morse. Mr. Five by Five in 1942, and then the House of Blue Lights in 1946. Freddie logged nine top ten hits in all, and he also had one of the first versions of that old black magic, backing up Margaret White, another great Catholic artist. So Freddie recorded prolifically through 1952 for Catholic Records, he passed away in 1965 at the age of 55, and. Um, we're here to celebrate his music and his legacy day with the unveiling of this plaque. With that, I'm going to turn it back over to Bill for the. Uh,